Let's all share the good news with the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection Podcast with your host, Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Holy Family Daily Gospel Reflection. My name is Yvette Celeste. And I'm Haley. And this is Haley, and we are going to share the gospel with you and your family. And why don't we get started with prayer? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory to you, O God in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We sing praise and thanksgiving to you, for you are Lord. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to lift us in our hearts and our minds in the sanctifying grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, in your mercy that endures forever that we praise, and in your goodness, which is everlasting, that we rejoice in. We give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, in your hearing. Lord, may we glorify your name. And as we lift our hearts to you, O Lord, in great love, in great fervor, in great adoration, we sing praise to you in the blessed sacrament. We sing praise to you in heaven. We sing praise to you. O Father, O Son, O Holy Spirit, for you are Lord. Lord, we thank you for every area of our lives, every gift and every blessing. We ask for blessings for all that are listening. And as we lift our own personal and private intentions over into your sacred heart, we give thanks to you in your hearing. Lord, grant us all your peace. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And today we'd like to pray for all of the holy souls in purgatory. Let's pray for the holy souls in purgatory as we lift all the holy souls in purgatory into the sacred heart of the Lord. We ask, O Lord, to grant them eternal rest. We ask for repose of every soul in your just scrutiny, Lord. We ask in your mercy that this be done. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we lift every area of the world into the sacred heart of the Lord. We ask for mercy wherever it's needed the most. We ask, O Lord, for your Holy Spirit to guide every heart, to turn to you faithfully and with great love and great adoration of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Haley, what would you like to place in the sacred heart of the Lord today? Me, my mom, my dad, everyone in the world, all nations, children, and astronauts, and animals. Very good. Okay, so we place everyone into the sacred heart of the Lord, and all children, every nation, for God loves us all in every nation, in every neighborhood, in every area in our lives. God has ordained every moment for us as family. God has ordained every moment in our lives. We just give thanks to the Lord for his love in us all. And Jesus, we trust in you. Lord, as we place all of these personal and private intentions into your sacred heart, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide every heart to receive you in sacramental communion, to receive you in your body and blood that is transubstantiated in every Catholic Mass. Lord, we ask for all in the world for the increase of the gift of understanding in the gospel. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to guide every heart to turn to you faithfully and in great love, in great fervor, in great holy adoration of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to receive you in baptism, to receive you in the Eucharist, to receive the seal of the Holy Spirit in confirmation, which we receive as we register for our CIA. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us, to lift us, to shift us, to shape us, ignite our hearts ablaze, enlighten our hearts and minds in your living word this day and all. Always. Lord, we thank you in your hearing, and we ask for the holy intercession of the Blessed Mother for every mom who happens to be with child to say, I want my baby to love their child more than they've ever loved themselves, and always to place you first. 
We ask for this great holy intercession of the Blessed Mother, Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, foster father of the, of Jesus and guardian of the Holy Family, pray for us. All saints, pray for us. All who rejoice in heaven, all holy men and women who rejoice when one sinner turns to the Lord, pray for us. All holy martyrs, pray for us. Pray for conversion of every nation. Pray for conversion in our own nation. Pray for conversion in every area of the world. All holy martyrs, pray for us. Pray for us, O holy angels of God, all choirs of angels of God, led by St. Michael the Archangel. We thank you for your prayers. Lord, we thank you for sending St. Michael and our guardian angels and every angel to pray for us. Lord, we thank you even further for sending your Son. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. Lord, grant us your peace. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, we trust in you. Lord, we lift every area of our own heart and we praise you. We thank you, O Holy Spirit, for the work that you have begun in us all. We ask to show us the way, O Lord, and guide us always to understand how you are using us for your glory. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen and hallelujah. Today's reading comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. We're reading from chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to, to listen to Jesus. But when the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus addressed this parable to them, What man among you have having a hundred sheep and losing one of them? Would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over the sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or would a woman having ten coins and losing one would not light a camp and sweep the house searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found the lost coin that I lost in just the same way. I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Haley, for reading that for us. You're welcome. Okay, so as we get started with today's reflection, we turn the word into prayer and praise. This is a little like Lexio Divina. As we contemplate the word, we turn the word into prayer. And Lord, grant us always your peace. Glory to you, O Lord, in the highest. Glory to you, O Lord. We praise you, and we always will. We give you thanksgiving, for you are Lord. Lord, grant us always your Holy Spirit to guide us, to lift us, shift us, shape us, ignite our hearts ablaze. O Lord, increase your fruits in us, increase your gifts in us, increase your charisms, your virtues, pour your living water in us all. Pour forth your holy breath, O Lord. Breathe in us, breathe in every nation, so that all can turn to you, so that all can say yes to you, which can only be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask for your holy presence in every area of our lives to guide our hearts, to ignite our hearts ablaze in your fire, to illuminate the holy word. And as we ask in this way, Lord, we give thanks to hearing your living word. We give thanks to hearing your holy living word which is the highest word we have. Master, where else should we go? You have the words of eternal life, is the word of St. Peter, the apostle. Lord, grant us all your peace. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Beautiful. And I invite the Holy Spirit to guide every word, as do we all. We invite the Holy Spirit to guide all of our words, all of our conversations, all of our actions, our decisions, our discernment, our holy living, our holy families, our holy heart to turn to you even with even greater love, O Lord, placing you first and loving each other as we love ourselves. And we give thanks to you in your hearing, O Hosanna in the highest. So here we hear from the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. Now these are found in the Gospel of Luke. Now the parable of the lost coin is unique to the Gospel of Luke. The other synoptic Gospels do not have the parable of the lost coins. And that's one of the things that makes the Gospel of Luke so very special. That and it has the entire infancy narrative, as does the Gospel of Matthew. In the front of Gospel of Luke, it is such a wonderful Gospel to read with our families and to read to our children. When we begin with the Gospel of Luke, we are beginning in such a beautiful way, adoring the the Holy Lord, the birth of our Lord, the Annunciation of our Lord, the visitation of St. John the Baptist, of Mother Mary to St. Elizabeth, and the rejoicing in the womb of St. Elizabeth's tummy. We, we receive all that from the Gospel of Luke. The presentation of the Lord. These are all the joyful mysteries and the finding of Jesus in the temple. These are all very unique to Luke. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew does have the infancy narrative in the front of the Gospel of Matthew. But Luke is the one who brings us the joyful mysteries. And these are the mysteries we normally pray during Advent. This is what we celebrate during Advent is the birth of our Lord. This is a beautiful time to open the Gospel of Luke with your family and just share a verse or two at a time every night with your children, with your family members, with your friends. As you do so, you will not only increase the understanding of God's will, but you will be sowing in the kingdom of God. And that's what builds the kingdom of God. That's so others and ourselves can say yes, just like Mother Mary in the Annunciation in the front of the Gospel of Luke. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus is with us as we sow the gospel, as we sow his living word. His word is living in every way. It has the intention that God has placed within it and does not come back to God void. And as we sow the living word of the Lord, we are sowing the highest word there is. There's nothing higher than the word of the Lord. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to help all, guide, guide us all to sow your living word, to say yes to you, just like Mother Mary in the Annunciation, just like St. Joseph has says yes to the Lord in the Gospel of Matthew, just as every saint and every holy man and woman has said yes to you. And every angel led by St. Michael has said yes to you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have all said yes to you. We give thanks to you in your hearing. O Hosanna in the highest. As we lift today's gospel for reflection, the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coins take some deeper reflection. Now, a parable is something that Jesus uses to help us to understand. And it's been said that you have to understand a little bit of what was going on in Jesus's time to be able sometimes to understand the parable. There's many different reflections that are out there that are so very wonderful. And I'll just share a couple here. In the parable of the lost sheep and in the parable of the lost coins, we see the shepherd who has lost his sheep. The shepherd would be Jesus, and the lost sheep would be all of his people. Now, Jesus, who loves us so very much, when someone is lost and they are doing their own thing, they're paying attention to their fleshy desires to the world, they are not listening to the gospel of God, they are doing what they want to do. And this is for selfish gain. This is for vain reasoning. When we turn to the Lord, however, with our whole heart, this is where we seek the Lord and we are rewarded. And Jesus, who loves us so very much, never, never 
never leaves us. He is faithful. This doesn't mean to go act however you want and the Lord will be faithful anyway. Jesus wants us to come to him in repentance. Jesus wants us to turn to him and to put everything aside, to put our worldly desires aside, our fleshy desires aside, to put the world's views aside and to say, Jesus, I want what you want. I praise you and I love you, and I seek to understand your gospel. I seek to understand your messages. These are the people that that are lost that have never gone to Mass, or maybe addicted, or just haven't opened the gospel, just haven't opened the Bible, and haven't sought the Lord. Instead, l- relied on their own reasoning, judgment, and maybe even the thoughts of others. Come to Mass. Come celebrate the Lord in Mass. We honor the living Word of God when we act on the living Word of God when we do so. For God had said, remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. And Jesus says, love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul. When we do, we are obeying the first three commandments. And when we love others as we love ourselves, we are fulfilling the last seven commandments of the Ten Commandments. So we fulfill them as we act on the word of the Lord. Now, Jesus, who rejoices when he finds that lost sheep, all of heaven rejoices as it is written. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Jesus finds it. He sets it on his shoulder with great joy. He calls his friends. He says to them, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. The joy that is in heaven over one repentant sinner is loud. It is loud when one sinner repents. And in a vision, it has been allowed through the grace of God for me to see that It is very loud when all of heaven rejoices. St. Michael is the loudest, I might add. And it is not a little tiny sound at all. It is nothing like you've ever heard before. And the angels compare it to this. If you were to place, and I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. It is worth repeating a thousand times over. If you were to place a million football stadiums, we'll use football because it's easy, a football stadiums side by side, pack every seat. In fact, place a hundred million football stadiums side by side, pack every seat. And the winning play is the same in all hundred million football stadiums. The last few seconds of the game the winning touchdown in the air, and the football goes over the end zone and makes a goal. The winning throw. The last throw of the game. The roar that you would hear in a hundred million stadiums over one football hitting the end zone is nothing. It is nothing compared to the rejoicing that you hear in heaven when one sinner repents. And it is nothing little. It is like, yeah, but I mean, times a multitude that is uncountable by humans. Times that by an uncountable number. There's more angels than there are stars in the sky. And an uncountable multitude rejoices when one sinner repents. And thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord who loves us that much that he would never leave us. And thank you to all of heaven who prays for us and rejoices when we say yes to the Lord. In the parable of the lost coins, there is a woman with 10 coins who searches for her lost coin. Now, in retrospect, one woman searching for one lost coin probably wouldn't happen in our time period. And this is where a little bit of understanding will be helpful. For in Jesus's time period, however, a Jewish woman had a, um, it was a headdress, it was a headband, and there were 10 coins on the headband. Now, this was something that she gave to her husband. It was Jewish custom for a woman to possess 10 silver gold coins, which would be presented by the bridegroom on the day of their engagement. And those coins may contain the groom's family name or some other symbol relating to the family. And from that day till the day of marriage, she has to take those coins 
keep wiping them often, which means she's thinking of the groom. And on the day of marriage, those coins are displayed on their ornaments, either on their head or as a chain. So the more the coins shine, the more she has thought of the groom. And if those coins don't shine, then that will reflect the girl's character. Now, considering she has lost one coin, her marriage could even stop. And the groom would simply assume, or he could assume anyway, that she's not responsible or interested in the groom. The seriousness of these coins at the time that this was spoken is pretty incredible. And as she, as the verbs indicate, she would light a lamp, she would sweep the house, she would search carefully until she finds it. And when she does find it, she calls her friends and neighbors and says to them, rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In the same way, Jesus searches. He he knows us. He loves us. He never leaves us. He loves us so much that it is he who beckons us to him. As we come to him and we repent of our sins, it is he who brings us to him. He meets us more than halfway as the parable of the man with the prodigal son would suggest. He comes to greet us where we're at and he says, I love you. Come to me and I will give you rest. My peace be with you, not as the world gives. Do I give it to you? Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Jesus says, rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I have lost. In the same way, I tell you, there'll be more rejoicing among the angels of God than over one sinner who repents. And as we celebrate the octave of All Saints Week and All Saints Day, we also want to reflect Yesterday, we celebrated the commemoration of the faithful departed, which is known as All Souls Day. You can, by the way, you can gain a plenary indulgence during the octave, November 1st through 8th, for the holy souls in purgatory. And the indulgence may only be applied to the souls in purgatory. The regular conditions apply for the plenary indulgence. In addition to visiting the cemetery, you must go to the confession that week, Receive Holy Communion once for every plenary indulgence. Pray for the Holy Father once for each and be detached from any desire to sin. And if you visit a ter- cemetery once a day from November 1st to 8th and go to confession once, mass daily, pray to the Holy Father daily, and you are detached from any desire to sin, you can gain up to eight plenary indulgences for the souls in purgatory. Once released from purgatory, these saintly souls from heaven can and will pray for you. And this is an act of love for those who are in the Lord's just scrutiny. We just pray for that the Lord's mercy, which knows no end, is everlasting in every way possible. We pray, O oh Lord, for your holy, holy love to pour through us all. And we pray for the holy souls in purgatory. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And may the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. By the way, come to Mass. Come to Mass regularly, faithfully, even daily. And if you haven't received the body and blood, the actual body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't been baptized in the Trinitarian formula, that is in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, if you haven't received the seal of the Holy Spirit, the further installment from baptism of the Holy Spirit, wait till you see what God does when you say yes to the Lord. All names in heaven all names in heaven who praise the Lord and rejoice when we turn to the Lord. Pray for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This is what Father Rocky on Relevant Radio, he prays 
One our Father, one Hail Mary, one Glory be, and he recites, Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. You can add as many prayers as you wish as we pray for the holy souls in purgatory. And may God bless you in your hearing. Haley, do you have any Bible verses that you want to share with everyone out there? My peace be with you. Very well. Okay, very good. Peace be with you. My peace be with you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Haley, for sowing that. And thank you for all who are listening. May God bless you and may the Lord's peace be with you. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May he look kindly upon us and grant us all his peace. Lord, grant us all your rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, families. May God bless you. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye,